You're listening to Conferences Online Allergy from Children's Mercy Hospitals and Clinics in Kansas City, Missouri. Today is October 21st, 2011, and I'm your host, Dr. Jay Portnoy. Our topic today, Jurg-Strauss Syndrome. Our presenter is Dr. Rex Liu. He's an internal medicine resident at Truman Medical Center in Kansas City, Missouri. My name is Rex Liu. I'm an internal medicine resident um, at UMKC. I'm doing an allergy rotation this month uh, at Children's Mercy. And um, we uh, going to talk quickly, just a quick brief uh, overview on uh, Church Strauss, just kind of like presentation and treatment options and, uh, and uh, diagnosis, et cetera. So just a quick over uh, the objectives. Um, I'm going to go over just a quick overview, some clinical features and presentations, um, and diagnosis and treatment, um, just because it's such an uh, uncommon uncommon uh, uh, diagnosis. So overview, um, it's also known as allergic granulomatosis. Um, it's classified as a necrotizing uh, vasculitis. Um, out of the ANCA, vasculitis is the least common. Um, it represents about 10% of all major vasculitis. Um, the pathogenesis is unknown, which um, you'll find out later. And then, like I said before, it's very uncommon. Um, six out of every one million people diagnosed uh, annually, so it's um, fairly rare. Um, and uh, typical presentation is usually patients in the 40s. Um, pretty rare in older adults and young children, but can happen in different groups. So presentation, um, quickly, uh, just briefly, it goes through in three phases. Um, the verdromal phase is uh, usually in the second and third decade of life, um, presents as allergic rhinitis, asthma, um, atopic diseases. Um, the asthma is usually uh, an adult onset asthma, so that's a little hint for you. And um, it's also fairly poorly controlled uh, asthma as well, with multiple steroid use in the past. Um, the eosinophil phase is the second phase, and it's just um, you'll notice eosinophilia and the infiltration in different organs, lungs, and GI tract um, are very common. Um, it could involve other um, organs, but we'll go into that in more detail later. Um, the vasculitic phase is in the third and fourth decade of life, and this is usually where patients uh, get diagnosed with this disease. Um, and you'll get vascular and extravascular um, granulomatosis. Additional signs at this time, you'll get a fever and weight loss and malaise. Um, usually, this is when they present to the hospital. Um, uh, lung involvement, like I said before, asthma is present in 95% of the cases. Um, like I said, it's typically poorly controlled and worsens uh, with the vasculitic phase, um, uh, but improves after appropriate treatment. Um, but um, in cases where asthma is not involved in the diagnosis, Atopic diseases is usually present at that time. Um, pulmonary opacities um, are seen. Um, infiltrates and infusions and nodules are rare. Um, with skin involvement, uh, you'll have, uh, once again, it's most common in the vasculitic phase. Uh, presents up to 50 to 65 percent of patients. Um, subcutaneous nodules in the extensor surfaces of the arms and elbows are most commonly seen, but you can also have purpura. Um, papular rashes and hemorrhagic lesions can also be found. This is just an example of the subcutaneous nodule. Um, this is on the extensor aspect of the uh, of the elbow. Other organ involvement, um, cardiac-wise, um, uh, you can get infusions and heart failure. Um, if you have cardiac involvement, it's usually a sign of a poor prognosis. Neurologic involvement um, is there as well. And what um, main uh, issue with that is the blood flow to the neurons is usually involved causing decreased flow, causing your symptoms of neuropathy, such as foot drop and wrist drop. Renal involvement, such as acute renal failure and protein urea, can be seen commonly. Um, eosinophilic uh, gastroenteritis um, is commonly found, and uh, you'll get severe bowel pain, bleeding, and diarrhea, and that's pretty common in there, too. And, and then with that, not being arthritis is also seen. So here's just a quick example. I know that the presentation was pretty pretty brief, but um, this is something I pulled off on on a website, and it was a 36-year-old male presents with several uh, months of fevers and uh, weight loss and malaise and new risk drop. All medical problems started about 16 years ago. He was diagnosed with eczema and asthma, recently uh, admitted with pulmonary opacities and uh, peripheral eosinophilia. Um, patient has history of asthma and poorly controlled inhaled steroids, um, has needed multiple source of systemic steroids, and presents the allergy clinic for persistent uncontrolled asthma. Um, they don't usually present in such a clear way uh, but I think the important point to notice is the fact that his asthma was adult onset. He's had poor controlled uh, asthma in the past with multiple systemic steroids and been 
neurological symptoms in the ESM program. So diagnosis, um, clinical history is obviously one of the most important things you could do, such as the asthma, the age of onset, if they have history of multiple steroid use, skin lesions, allergic rhinitis, um, cardiac symptoms, et cetera. Lab testing, uh, there's no specific lab test to prove you have true Strauss, um, but obviously a CBC would dip with eosinophil um, greater than 10%, it's, uh, it's highly suggestive. P ANCA is only positive 40 to 60% um, in Trick Strauss, and C ANCA is only 10%, so it's very nonspecific. Uh, IgE can be elevated, and your two phase reactants um, have no use uh, mainly in, these, uh, in this condition. Chest X rays and CTs uh, can find opacity <coughs> lesions. And then um, biopsy is your gold standard uh, for a definite diagnosis. And um, skin lesions and peripheral uh, neuropathy lesions and lung uh, lesions can all be biopsied. And some research has said uh, to go with the least invasive, but when speaking with some experts, they said that um, uh, to go with the more invasive, um, like lung lesions, because it, if the severity of the disease is very severe, so you could get a quicker diagnosis because you could get false positives with, uh, false negatives, I mean, with the skin biopsy. Um, so diagnostic criteria, the College of Rheumatology has uh, put out a, a criteria, and um, each one is a point, a four out of six is highly sensitive and specific. So the point system um, for this will be asthma will give you a point, um, eosinophilia, uh, modern neuropathy, um, polyneuropathy, pulmonary opacity, paranasal sinus abnormalities, and a biopsy showing eosinophil eosinophils, um, and four out of six is highly sensitive. And then another criteria is Langhans uh, criteria, and this is just you need all three of them to be positive, and then asthma, and eosinophilia, um, and vasculitis, and two or more extra pulmonary lesions. Some don't like this as much because, like I said before, 95% of the time you have asthma, but then the 5% of the time you have atopic diseases, and those could also be um, uh, a positive diagnosis for Schrick Strauss. Um, but once again, biopsy is the gold standard for the definite diagnosis, and um, tissue sample is the best. So treatment-wise, um, they do it on a point system, um, uses during the therapy, um, and uh, based on their clinical findings. So the five-factor score is what some use, um, and depending on the score that they get, um, they will go for a more aggressive or a less aggressive treatment. Cardiac involvement, GI involvement, acute renal failure, protein urine, CNS is a score for each point. And as, as you uh, score more, um, the poorer the prognosis it gets. Um, Systemic steroids is the initial mainstay treatment. Um, you actually get pretty good response with just steroids itself. They're 93% uh, achieve remission with just on steroids, as high as 95%. And uh, what you usually do is you give IV uh, methylprednisone, like one gram for three days, and then you taper it off for 12 to 18 months. Um, for more severe cases, cyclophosphamide immune suppressant can be used. Um, when I was reading, they said uh, if you have an FFS score greater than two, you can use that. Uh, but some experts say that if you just have any extra um, um, organ involvement, you can use it because the prognosis is already uh, a little more poor, and so um, a lot of them use that. What to watch out for is um, drug monitoring. You get a lot of bladder toxicity, like hemorrhagic cystitis, and cancers can be caused from that, so just your regular routine monitoring from that. And then if you use the combination of the immunosuppressant and systemic steroids, um, pneumocystic prophylaxis. Other therapies can be used, um, other immune suppressants. Azobioprin um, is thought to be used if um, the cyclophosphamide disease, the disease is not severe enough to use cyclophosphamide. Self-seven IVIG Zolair has also been, uh, the IgE um, effect has thought to be a pro apoptotic effect on the eosinophils um, to help with that. And then uh, anti endoleukin 5 has shown to reduce um, steroid use. Um, none, of the, none of those are FDA approved. The anti endoleukin 5 has also shown um, to be helpful with patients who are resistant to steroid and cyclophosphamide uh, about 60% of the time, but um, they're trying to get approval for that. So just a quick, why is this important? Um, for allergists, uh, you guys, um, asthma patients are a big portion of your population. Um, you guys are highly exposed to these type of patients, so this is very important. Um, and also, for primary care physicians who um, have difficult treating asthma patients, they send the more, more difficult ones to the specialist, so you guys are going to see a lot of these um, exposure. And so what to watch out for when you get presented with a difficult asthma patient that has multiple steroid uses. Look for signs of um, Strauss, such as 
it be adult onset or skin lesions or pulmonary nodules, because you shouldn't probably get pulmonary nodules with someone just with asthma. Um, along with the cardiac findings um, or uh, CNS findings such as wrist drop or foot drop. Um, this is just a quick sample question that I gathered from MixApp. Um, it's fairly simple, but uh, there's some good points I guess could be brought out of it. It's a 45-year-old female with a two-day history of shortness of breath, had a two-week history of ankle edema and fever and cough. She was starting on azithromycin but has not improved. 15-year um, history of allergic rhinitis and asthma on steroids and albuterol. Two months ago, her uh, asthma worsened um, despite increase of Advair. Um, vitals are relatively stable except for some tachycardia. Um, she had physical exam findings of crackles and low extremity um, edema, uh, along with some uh, pitting and uh, along with some uh, chest X-ray findings of uh, um, uh, right lower infiltrate. Um, laboratory studies shows uh, elevated leukocytosis with uh, eosinophilia, uh, with uh, acute renophilia cred and 1.4 and positive pain income. So in addition to methoprednisone, which is the following is appropriate treatment for this patient. Um, obviously, um, it's cyclophosphamide along because she's having uh, other organ involvement. But what to point out um, isn't probably the answer, but mainly just the presentation of the adult onset of the asthma along with the p uh, and then the uh, suggestion of organ um, failure of uh, the cardiac involvement. And so these are my references and a special thanks to Dr. Rosenwasser for taking time out to give me some teaching. And I guess if there's any questions. This has been an ACAAI production. To learn more about conferences on line allergy or the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, go to www.acaai.org. See you next time.